A gray evening out there on the Arkansas River. You're looking right now at the 430 bridge where traffic is moving along smoothly. People are getting about on their weekend. RDOT has scheduled closures, but we're going to tell you about those in just a moment. First, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sarah Korbakowitz, and we'll begin with the largest industry in the natural state, agriculture. According to the Arkansas Farm Bureau, we have over 49,000 farms. Tonight, THV 11's Jalissa Garza introduces us to one woman who's working to increase female farm ownership. I'm considered an urban farmer. I am actually registered with USDA as a farmer. I have my farm number. Keisha Cobb started growing fruits and vegetables 15 years ago. I started initially because I remember the day I had to choose between buying something healthy or putting gas in my car to take my son to school. And I'm like, what gives? So this beautiful food is coming out of the ground and I need to be able to grow it. Since then, Cobb has taught other people how to do the same thing in their backyard like she has. Now I have a pop up farmers market here at my house and I can collect SNAP benefits for that and teach other people how to do the same. Her goal is to inspire other women. I don't see a lot of farmers that are black women. I don't see a lot of farmers that are women. So with us representing less than 1% of farmers in the state, it's very important for me to see representation. This led her to starting a chapter of National Women in Agriculture right here in the natural state. Black women only comprise of 400 farmers in the state. So we want to only not only empower black women, but women as a whole to enter the agriculture industry where it's the number one industry in Arkansas. The chapter has been up and running for a year now. Cobb hopes it continues to grow. We're working on a project right now to bring in 1000 little girls into the organization and establish the youngest of farmers in Arkansas. In North Little Rock, Jalissa Garza. THV 11 News. And a good Sunday evening. We've been quiet for much of the day. It's been a lot more mild in comparison to yesterday. Conditions have been quiet, but we're starting to see some changes and we will see some of that as the night continues. Right now we're sitting at 63 degrees under cloudy skies, but in the area we've already begun to see some rain showers pop up once again, especially across parts of Northwest Arkansas and here in Central Arkansas. We actually heard a little bit of a brief downpour here in the studio moments ago, and we'll see some spotty showers throughout the evening hours, although it's expected to be generally Normally quiet and dry and mild with temperatures in the low to mid 60s. We have a cold front that's going to be rushing on through tonight, especially moving across parts of Texas and Oklahoma. Ahead of that, or while it's pushing on through, we're going to be seeing those winds increase, sustain anywhere from 20 to 30, with gusts as high as 30 or even more for parts of the state where we're actually going to be under a uh, wind advisory for much of the mid south because of the high winds that we could be seeing as this next system pushes on through tonight. It does have the chance of bringing some strong storms for parts of the state, but not for everybody. I'll let you know more in detail in the forecast coming up. Who has the best chance for that and what the week in store holds for us? Just into the newsroom, North Little Rock police are investigating a deadly stabbing. It happened in the 700 block of East Bethany earlier this afternoon. Person of interest now in custody and officers are working to notify the victim's family. Please avoid this area as the investigation is ongoing and we are still working to learn more. We'll continue to bring you those latest details on air and online at THV11.com. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office is investigating an overnight stabbing that left a 19 year old in serious condition. Officials say it happened at Carter Off Road Park in Alexander. Another teen is facing charges. 19 year old Memphis Catelson. After the stabbing, Bryant police arrested Catelson on unrelated charges, but he's now facing first degree battery charges connected to the stabbing. Jacksonville police need your help finding the person right there on your screen. Philip Lewis is 34 years old and was reported missing on Friday. He was last seen wearing black pants and a camo shirt with black work boots. He is six foot three, and if you see him or know where he could be, you're asked to call police at the number right there on your screen.
This is a live look at I-30 right now. Traffic is clear. People are moving about their day. Now it might not be moving this smoothly Monday and Tuesday. Double lane closures will begin late tonight and go through the early morning tomorrow. This of course weather permitting as crews work on the I-30 crossing project. Weekly lane closures have become regular occurrences for folks between the north and south side of the river. So you want to make sure you keep an eye out for construction barrels and signage. And as always, take extra precaution as crews are actively out on the road. North Little Rock High School will return to business as usual tomorrow. This after students used AMI days while the district removed a colony of bats from the building. More than 100 of the flying mammals were captured, according to Superintendent Greg Paluski. Response teams narrowed down where the wildlife was entering the building and blocked off the entrances. One student says they were scratched by a bat and is being treated. Crews used the weekend to clean affected areas, which included the cafeteria and kitchen. And if you're wondering, bats are a protected species here in Arkansas, so these bats are said to be getting released into Burns Park. Meanwhile, in Conway, the search for a missing teen continues. Tanvi Marupali went missing over a month ago on January 17th. She was last seen walking away from Conway Junior High School, but never got on the school bus home more than five weeks ago. Her parents tell THV 11 a couple days before her disappearance, they told Tanvi due to family circumstances, they may have to move back to India, and she told them she wanted to stay in the U.S. Now the U.S. Marshals are involved and the case remains open tonight. I feel that the fear of returning back is stopping her from coming back if she's still uh, he, uh, hidden somewhere. Everyone else is looking for you. Please, please, Tali, please come back to home. Tanvi's birthday is a month away, March 24th, and community leaders are hoping to reunite the family in time to celebrate that together. If you know where she may be, you're asked to call the tip line. That's right on your screen. Yes, and we also have new developments from Hot Springs Police about a double homicide that killed a 21-year-old woman and her 5-year-old son more than two years ago. As they analyze evidence and travel far distances, police now tell me that solving this case could help close others. I sat down with the lead detective who says they're getting closer to finding out who's responsible and hoping to solve this case in the next year. Do you think solving this case could help other cases? Yes. If you believe it could solve other cases, you also have to take the time to look at other cases. Tomorrow night at 10, we'll share the leads detectives are following and the evidence that brought them there and introduce you to the victim's family as they're left with more questions than answers. Russia's war in Ukraine is days into its second year. Ukraine promises to keep fighting, while U.S. officials are warning China to think twice before sending help. As Christian Benavides reports, Russia is accusing the U.S. and NATO allies of threatening the survival of their country. Now more than a year into Russia's brutal invasion, supporters of Ukraine rallied in cities across the U.S. this weekend. Ukraine's southern port city of Odessa honored soldiers killed in the grinding war with Russia. Ukrainian military drone footage shows what are said to be Russian tanks and other armored fighting vehicles being blown up by mines. I think Putin is uh, right now entirely too confident of his ability to wear down um, Ukraine, to grind away, and that's what he's giving every evidence that he's determined to do right now. Meanwhile, Washington is growing increasingly concerned that China could decide to send lethal military aid to Russia. We will continue to send a strong message that we believe that sending military aid to Russia at this time when they are using their weapons to bombard cities, kill civilians and commit atrocities would be a bad mistake and China should want no part of it. Last week, the U.S. announced billions of dollars in additional military assistance to Ukraine. But some lawmakers are urging the Biden administration to provide Ukraine with F-16 fighter jets. This whole thing is taking too long. And it really didn't have to happen this way. Following his unannounced visit to Kyiv last week, President Biden said in a television interview that sending F-16s is off the table for now. But he didn't rule that out for later.
Cristian Benavides, CBS News. Still ahead, the University of Pine Bluff is celebrating 150 years of service to the community. The special keynote speaker you can see for yourself when THB 11 continues. But first, a quick check in on that gloomy weekend weather, Corrales. Yeah, we've been seeing rain chances through the weekend. We have more chances for rain tonight, but we're watching out for the potential for some strong storms for some across northwest Arkansas tonight and some pretty high winds that are expected to push on through tonight as well. So I have more details on that in your forecast coming up.